It's TMNT time! Hello and welcome to another figure view. Today we're going to have a look at the Super 7 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Slash figure. The Evil Turtle from Dimension X, as it says right there on the bio. So we got another wave of Super 7 figures and if you're not familiar with it, Super 7 makes TMNT figures based on the original toy. Updated, upgraded and hella nice looking. And I wanted to start it off with Slash because I've always been a big fan of the evil anti-version of the heroes and that is Slash and the uh, original toy version just looked that much better I think I, I love the big yellow eye the wonky weapons and the spikes and just yeah I could talk about it but why talk about it if we can look into it let's get him out of the box this is a big chunky boy and you know me I love that kind of stuff look at the smile he's so happy to be here I'm happy to be here let's have a look at size the turtle stands at about 15 centimeters to the top of the head if we're going to the top of the shell it would be a little bit more but let's stay on heads heights it's like six inches for the top of it size comparisons here's Jolter he has stage figure some Goku Naka Michelangelo Super 7 Leonardo Shredder, Rocksteady, the original Playmate Slash, and Darkseid. As usual, he has a bunch of cool things about this, and he has a bunch of things I kind of like... Eh. So first and foremost, the look. I mentioned that he's big, he's bulky, he's chunky, and I absolutely freaking love that aspect of the figure. That is one of the more important things. Like, the original Slash figure was a lot of hunched over and whatnot, and would have towered over the turtles. Well, not even towered, but just would have made up a whole bunch of more meat. And that's something I feel like, but going back to the NECA, like, arcade figure, which was like just a repanel of the turtles, you don't freaking do that, and they didn't do here. So props for that. Let's have a look at the inside detail of everything. So the biggest aspect of this figure, especially this face, and the thing that always stands out to me is the big yellow eye. Now, they made it just on a flat surface where it looks more like an eye patch, which is identical to the original figure. So they stuck to that. But I really, look at how nice it looks side by side, by the way. But I really would have preferred them to do it, I don't like exaggerated, like on the original where it goes even over the mask itself. Or just, you know, updated it. Because that's, that's one of the things about these Super 7 figures. Sometimes they update things about the figure and sometimes they don't which is a little bit inconsistent and this is a case where I would have preferred they uh, made an actual eye out of it and not just plop something on there. Anyway, the rest of the face sculpt is absolutely amazing looking. I love this smile with the teeth on it. Teeth also nicely painted it only if you tilt it a little bit to the back you will see well well it's not completely covered up over there but that's fine I mean I don't really gonna see that notice that anyway and then you have the headband which also has some molded detail on there as it is the style with all the TMNT figures from Super 7 and you're probably noticing also that the entire skin tone is molded in this reptilian look with the wrinkles and the boils on there and also has some black wash on it which is cool and really elevates the sculpt however they only put the black wash on the skin Ha 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 ha! Speaking of which, look at the back of the turtle. Have this giant shell with all the yellow spikes on there, which, again, would have benefited from a little bit of a black wash. Especially, I, I feel like especially the shell, maybe the spikes would have been a little bit too effed up from that. And also have like the belt, which isn't painted. You have unpainted detail on that one too, which you could say, well, whatever. It's just like was like that in the original, but then you have painted detail in the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, so we have the skulls on there, which has a silver and the slash symbol and whatnot. And the things I'm saying, it's just like, I'm not even really complaining about it. It's just like these inconsistencies drive me mad sometimes. This is like, why? Why do you do that? Also, what's not painted on these panels over here? You have these wooden panels, which have not, do not have a drop of paint on there. And just, again, I, 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 Okay, and we have uh, um, the blades in front, which I'll paint at the end. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now, but anyway, you have the purple uh, band uh, around the hand, and then you have the blades on there, also the fingernails are painted, and there's also some more detail in the elbow pads, like a little bit of battle damage 
on both sides. I think you have like some lines on over here. And on this side you have some some dots. And you have these things are rubbery. These things, the uh, blades, are not rubbery though. But uh, I think it's somewhat sharp, but it's still somewhat movable. So it's not the heart of plastic, but it's also not rubbery. Great. Now that was like a great analogy. I don't know. I just, I'm just going to move on from that. Down to the legs, and uh, there's one thing about the legs that's kind of bothering me. It's uh, getting them into position, first and foremost. A little bit wobbly, as things are unfortunate. It's not the worst, but uh, we have the tail, and I don't know if the tail is a little bit too much in the way. Also, it's like a fairly big tail. Ladies, let's have a look. Let's just compare real quick. Yeah, it looked a lot smaller on the original, and it was going to the side, and you can also not move it around. So, they upgraded his tail. <laughs> okay. What are you doing, Sub-7? But anyway, you upgraded that, and you can also rotate it now. Which is cool, but it's kind of getting in the way of your leg articulation, unless you move it all the way out. Which, now it's more accurate to what it was on the original. Hmm. Intentional or not? I don't know, I find, I find it kind of funny, though. But, um, yeah, kind of posing legs how you want can be cumbersome if this thing is in the way. Sometimes. And uh, I'm... I'm done talking about this tail now. It makes me feel weird. So we move down to the legs and the knee. We actually have some more knee pads on there with the spiky purple stuff. And down to his feet with some more yellow, which is not properly covering it. Which I don't even mind. I would have preferred the, the yellow to look a little bit more dirty. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Down to the feet with some pack holes in there, even though they don't really have any bases. But I mean, Obviously doesn't need anything, has some pretty big feet and the articulation works well, which we'll have a look at. So we got the fairly standard 7 articulation, which is like, it's good. It could be better, but it's good. And I'm not gonna get hung up too much. I know they talked about it. They sometimes say that they refuse to use like double hinge to kind of ruin the figure and they're going more for aesthetics and like getting us closer, as close as possible to the original, which is fine. So. You know, obviously it's already better in articulation than the original, so, uh... Anyway, I just wanted to say that, that was like a quick disclaimer. And while it wasn't quick, it was like 30 seconds. Head goes up and down, does tilt side to side very nicely also. And you can also spin it as a swivel, and uh, then, uh, This is also soft plastic. I kind of thought I had it lost over there. So then we have the shoulder, which goes up and down, which is just on a hinge. And you can obviously rotate it in there, but it's very stiff. So if you don't like that, I don't even think it goes all the way. It seems like it's just blocking over there. So if you don't like that, you do still have the bicep swivel with the panels, the wooden panels are connected to the bicep, by the way. So now you know that, and then you have a simple hinge in the elbow. Does the bicep swivel even go all the way around? I don't want to force it too much, but I think it might. But it, no, it kind of gets stuck on the shell. That's kind of like the, uh, the problem with it. And then the hand, you have a hinge on there. The hand I have currently attached to it has the hinge where it goes side to side, but you also do get some hands where the hinges go up and down, so on. Uh, anyway, we'll have a look at that later once we get to the articulation. And we have nothing in the chest area. I thought because the shell is soft plastic, there might be some wiggle motion, but it doesn't seem to be that way. <clears throat> As we move down, the turtles all had a little bit of wiggle motion on the lower half, and it seems like you also have the joint in there, but, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really botch. Also, again, I feel like this is mostly a thing of the shell. Because, uh, yeah, the shell really goes down. Because of the tail and everything, it's just blocked. So, uh, yeah, we're not getting much out of that anytime soon. The lat moves forward, moves out to the side, and it doesn't go to the back once again because of the shell. You can also rotate it on here, on the ball itself. And then you have a simple hinge in the knee, which, honestly, this one is not great. Can you move the knee pad maybe up or down? I mean, I feel like you can, but still, this is not great. So then the foot goes forward, goes to the back, and does tilt side to side. So even for Super 7 standards, this is not the best articulation, I must say. So you get the accessories, and I always thought that was pretty fun, because it's kind of like the uh, evil version of the turtles. Like, you have these kind of spiky nunchucks, I'd say. All in a nice hot pink, by the way. And you can bend it, I don't think, hmm. I used to bend the old one on the toy, so 
I don't think it's gonna break, but also I'm not sure about it. Take some time. Then we have this kind of warped... It's not really a side, it's more like a dagger, but you know, it's kind of like a side, right? It's all kind of crumpled up. And then you have a morning star, which is like a bow staff with a big metal ball on it. Big metal spiky ball. This one is also warped. I don't know if they uh, that's intentional or not. Also fairly sturdy and spiky, so be aware of that. Kind of looks weird how they painted it over here, like there's... I don't know if the damage in it is intentional, because like there seems to be damage on that one part and then nowhere else. And what the hell is going on over there? And you can clearly see that they kind of assembled it at, this, at the middle of it, so... Kind of weird to see all these seam lines and whatnot, and then you have this also sword, kind of damaged sword, kind of crumpled up, and they have like this extra kind of spiky thing on it over there. I don't remember that on the original, but I might be wrong. Also just a regular handle, and you have this big sword, dagger, I don't know what you want to call it. That was also always my favorite weapon for Slash in general. I felt like always that's, that's his, you know, that's his weapon. All the other weapons, kind of like a copy of the Turtles one, but that's, that's his own. So then we have another face sculpt, which has the gritting teeth face, but, uh, you know, again, like I'm saying, it's not updated. Usually they do like an updated face and like a regular face. I guess this one is the updated face because on the regular face he does have... He isn't gritting his teeth, actually, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's cool, but would have liked a more, a more updated face. Then for the hands, we have these kind of open posing hands. These two fist hands, where, by the way, the hinges always go up and down, unlike the hinges we have on the figure itself. And then you have some more holding hands, as I mentioned before, to swap with the other ones, because these ones have the hinge that go up and down and not side to side. Finally, you have also two spiky grenades, which looks nice and detailed and are very spiky. Fortunately, you can't remove the pin over here. All of that is just kind of molded on. I mean, it's fine, it's a small accessory. And you also have some ninja stars. You have like the classic TMT ninja star, which was included with all the old school figures. And then you have like a more modern looking one. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, the packs on the belt are there to attach the ninja stars to it. This one's shorter, so I guess this one's for the smaller ninja star because it has a smaller hole as well. So uh, yeah, that's that. I really would have wished you could attach the grenades, but uh, yeah, they didn't do that. And finally, also there's uh, the entire sheet the weapon sheet, the weapon board, whatever you want to call it, which was always included with the old school toys where you have everything unpainted just in the color and my grenade unfortunately detached, but yeah, it's the exact same weapon we I just showed you, just combined in this thing and you can have these weapons too, if you want to take it out you can do that, but I usually just keep that in there for the collection. Final thoughts, and for this one I think it's always special, the first thing you gotta ask yourself, did they managed to recreate this. And yes, absolute freaking lootly, I think it looks like the old school Playmate Slash figure to the T, to perfection. With one issue, really like the belt, I kind of have a hard time wrapping my head around why it's pink in the front and not, you know, just black like the regular belt. That was something that I, I don't, just don't feel like was necessary. Other than that, oh my god, this figure looks so cool, so amazing, so big. And for the rest of it, it's just kind of like, there's stuff that's definitely debatable. Because people always say, like, well, at the price point, the articulation could be better. And maybe they could have painted the, these pads over there. And I say, yeah, sure, there's a point to both parts in the debate. But, again, if I'm going back to the original, is like, they try, and they said it a million, million times, they really tried to recreate this. And they managed to do so. Perfectly. So as such, I'm not gonna ramble any longer because everything else is just... You can have your arguments about it. That's fine. And if you want to have any more arguments about the figure, put them down in the comments and I'll happily reply to it. But as it is, I do recommend this figure. I think it's an amazing Slash and Slash itself is one of my favorite characters and uh, just a great job done here. And that's gonna do it guys, as usual, thank you very much for watching, don't forget if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like, and subscribe to the channel, so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, card game stuff, and whatever, slash, once.